Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Offcut Garage here in sunny hot Australia. Look at this weather. Hang on. We are getting right into it today. So uh, the 38 amps outside, and we are on 27% already. It is uh, 11:36 a.m. in the morning. That is a.m. No late night show today. So in today's video, we want to do a full discharge test of this battery here and see how everything works out. I have already connected the DL, hang on, what is it called? Yeah, the DL24 color screen, Bluetooth data transmission, digital control curve load meter user manual. I made a video about this um, device. I linked this down below. Amazing tester, goes up to 200 volt DC, which is fairly dangerous. And I think 20 amps, but it can only handle 130 watts at a time. And that's the maximum. So there's a bit of a limitation with this one, but still good enough to do a capacity test without involving the Victron Smart Shunt, because this is a small current. We are discharging this um, with only one amp. Because we have a five amp hour battery here, it will take five hours, right? Okay, we are having a look at the IBMS monitor board again. So we can see all the cell voltages and everything what the BMS actually does as well as um, having a look at the solar charge controller and i have bumped up the voltage a bit this morning already as you can see we are at 28.16 volts so that's pretty high already yeah 3.52 volts cell number four is sometimes our lowest cell when we have seven millivolt deviation and the balancer is still trying to balance but the problem here is i can only throttle down the active balancer to 0.3 amps and this is still a lot for this small battery at this high state of charge because we are now in the steep uh, incline of the charge curve yeah and 300 milliamps of discharge current for one cell brings the voltage down quite significantly so it is very hard to top balance this battery actually with an active balancer at the moment because the balancer is so large battery is so small i'm pretty much maxed out with the settings here and i don't think i can go any further are we already floating maybe we never know where's my float ah float okay here come on 29.15 done apply okay this should bump up our float voltage now to 29.15 volts yep i can see the solar panel is ramping up hang on i'll bring you back here on the real-time data 100 milliamps going into the battery now 100 milliamps coming from the solar panel 130 going into the battery the bms doesn't recognize any current it's under the threshold of this very small bms 160 now it registers something okay let's watch the cell voltages here So here around 300 milliamps coming from the solar panel and around 400 amps 350 the charge controller says going into the battery but the JK registers only 250 milliamps so not sure how accurate either of them is yeah 29.12 volts in the BMS 3.6 I think we've got an over voltage alarm now that's fine with me uh, Delta is 20 millivolt 3.65 volts that's good enough for me the ms has turned off we are turning off the uh, um, solar panel we're going into a night mode yep there's the moon and we turn on the capacity tester off we go one amps discharge uh, that's uh, 27 watts internal resistance it tells us and we have discharged three milliamp hours already okay this may take um i don't know how good cell number four is because you can see here in the jk bms cell number four is already our lowest cell right from the beginning and i don't think it will change so whenever cell number four is at 2.5 volts the discharge will stop it will disconnect this um tester maybe i don't know when does the BMS, now when does the solar charge controller actually disconnect my load? There is an under voltage alarm and there is a discharging voltage limit voltage. I don't know what this all means. 
Well, I guess we will find out because this will be the same situation down in the solar gate as well. Once the battery is fully depleted, uh, either the MPPT will disconnect all my solar gate situation or the JKBMS will turn off the battery to protect it. So whatever comes first, um, the gate will not work anymore and then we cannot further discharge this battery. Okay, we had 3.28 volts already with cell number four. That's not good. That is not good. And 31 milliampere hours only in the test. Okay, let's keep this running here. I'll monitor it from inside and I'll be right back after the pfft. Well, it looks like I could not walk fast enough from the house back to the garage here before everything shut down. Here the IBMS monitor shows us discharging under voltage alarm. So the BMS has actually shut down at 2.5 volts. And this was just happening. We can see the voltage is actually rising in cell number four again, 2.6 volts. While the other cells, look at this, they're at 3.2 volts still. So cell number four, definitely the lowest cell and cause of the issue here as expected. I want to have a look at the tester here. I'm not sure if you can see that actually. It's a bit hard to read this display. Yeah, here's a bit more brightness. Here down here, that's the important figure. 3.865 ampere hours we have discharged here. Yeah? Not even four ampere hours out of these seven ampere hour cells. It's all thanks to cell number four, of course. And because the BMS has shut off now, uh, the solar charge controller is totally off. And let's see what happens when the sun would come back now like this oh yeah it turns on okay we want to stop discharging here uh, battery is 0.4 amps going into it yeah this is coming from the solar and we can see it here in the jk bms as well 25 volts uh, 0.33 amps so we are recharging the battery now so this would all work perfectly fine bms shuts off if something happens so the charge controller turns off but when the sun comes back, it starts recharging the whole system again. So that's nice. Um, what also stays on is the monitoring module here, the IBMS uh, monitor, because this is connected to the battery, to the BMS itself, and the BMS itself has not shut down. Yeah, it disconnected the battery from the charger and from the load, but the BMS itself is still powered by the battery and stays on. So does the IBMS monitoring board. And this is exactly what we want in case of a shutdown. We want to still have connection to the system, see what is going on, what has caused the issue. Yeah. So this is all working extremely well. I'm very pleased with that. And here we've got the box with the Palo cells. <laughs> and I still got two. One has uh, 5,023 and another one has 5,021 milliamps. And this is the old cell number seven. I have unsoldered from this battery pack here, which had only 2.2 ampere hours. Yeah, and well, I will take one of these ones, the one with the highest capacity, obviously, 5,023, and replace some cell number four, and then we have at least these five ampere hours available in this whole pack. And I do another discharge test then and see if the other cells are in line with this one, but I think they are. And I also want to show you this one here. This is um, cell number one from the 48 volt battery. Yeah, from this battery we are using to test um, BMS and everything. And this was cell number one, which was very low. And I had to actually replace this one here too. Let me see what the voltage on this pack actually is now. It's still, yeah, it's still on 52.8 volts because if you remember i have disconnected the active balancer inside this uh, box it was always connected to the battery but was turned off with this run uh, switch so connected but deactivated but it has still drawn energy from the battery and caused this issue reverse polarity and while charging I could charge the battery, charging, charging, the voltage would not rise. Even all the other cells were on 3.5 volts. This one would not rise. I opened the case and found this one got really, really hot. So I turned everything off, let it cool down and replaced this one here. I want to see it's sitting here for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, here 210 millivolt we have. Uh, the polarity is correct now. I've tried to recharge this one here manually but it doesn't come to life anymore. So this one is totally toast. 
it didn't vent or something anything like this but yeah for some reason it got deep discharged and then reverse polarity with the next charge cycle so glad i found this one before something happened but i don't think these one actually go off very quickly here they start gassing here at the top and that's basically it all right cell number four it is then fully recharge fully top balance do another capacity test and then um, i'll be back here with some better results than 3.866 um, ampere hours hopefully all right give me I don't have time today and tomorrow. Okay, I'll be back with the result um, in two seconds. Good afternoon and welcome back to the same video as two, three days ago. Well, we have discharged the battery pack now with 4,658 milliampere hours. I guess that's a bit better than before, right? Yeah, this is what I found yesterday. Oh, it just stopped. So we have 4,658 milliampere hours. That's a bit better than before, right? Exactly what I just said. It's a bit better than before. So 4.6 ampere hours, that doesn't sound much. But is this actually enough to operate my solar gate every single day? So let's have a closer look what kind of load we have down in the solar gate. So obviously we've got the big controller main board yeah? and everything connects to this main board basically. So I measured a consumption of 60 milliamps for this controller board, which makes 1.44 ampere hours per day just for the controller. That is insane, right? So then obviously we've got the new EP Ever solar charge controller here. And when I connect this one to my uh, adjustable power supply, it shows me around 20 to 25 milliamps. Yeah, so in 24 hours, this is close to 0.6 ampere hours. Then we've got the JK BMS and the IBMS, which connects then back to my Wi-Fi and gives me all the battery data. And this all in total is about 15 milliamps, while the majority of that goes into the IBMS monitor module. So 15 milliamps makes 0.36 ampere hours in 24 hours. And then of course we've got the biggest load at the solar gate, the motors, the actual actuators, yeah, which open and close the gate. And they are taking a whooping 2.2 amps when in operation. And to do a full cycle, so open the gate and close the gate again, it's one minute. This would make 0.04 ampere hours a day. <laughs> so that is nothing. The biggest load takes the least amount of capacity or energy. So in here we've got um, two activations per day, so this is basically one cycle, open the gate and close the gate again. And probably my wife does the same, so we've got at least four activations, which makes a 0.07 ampere hour. So <laughs> just say we open the gate five times a day, that makes 0.18 ampere hours, yeah? That is the smallest number of all these loads connected to the solar gate. So all in total, this would make 2.56 ampere hours per day per day yeah 24 7 per day and we've got 4.658 ampere hours in this battery which we can fully utilize so almost twice as much as we actually need so we could operate all components of the solar gate for almost two days if there would be no additional sun coming in all right then let's have a look at the solar panels and do an estimate how much they actually deliver per day so here we have a look at the label or the specifications of the two solar panels which are mounted on this mast. So they are the Megavolt Solar Wasabi 1B 10 Watt Peak. 21.9 volt open circuit voltage and 0.71 amps short circuit current. So under optimal conditions we've got 17.9 volts and 0.5 amps out of one panel. And I've got two of them in series on top of this mast. Installation must be completed by a certified engineer. Do not connect or disconnect plug contacts during the system is under load current. Not following these instructions brings you in danger. Oh, we've got 21 volts, right? Well, I guess you can series connect some of these panels then and come to a high voltage, so fair enough. They put this um, warning on the label. So here the megavolt solar panel, 560 milliamps in 24 hours it delivers. 26.88 ampere hours this is already for two of them in series 26.8 ampere hours that's not bad right okay the sun doesn't shine 24 hours 
not even here. So how long does it shine? We go down to eight hours. Would be close to nine ampere hours of generated capacity. So do we have eight hours of pure sunshine down there and both panels are operating in optimal conditions? Probably not. What about four hours? Uh, I don't think we've got four hours of pure sunshine down there actually. Let's, uh, let's say two hours a day pure sunshine and the rest is crap. With this conservative calculation we would generate 2.24 ampere hours per day with these two panels in series. So we would not generate enough energy to operate our battery and the consumption with it for 24 hours. Yeah, we need at least 2.56 ampere hours. So these two panels will not cut it, at least not in this location. Yeah, because if I get three instead of two hours of sunshine on these panels, we already made 3.36 ampere hours, which is more than we actually use in 24 hours. So just a slight change in location with the solar panels and we should be fine. So what we need to do is we just need to find a better location for these two solar panels up on this mast. I installed this maybe 10 years ago and it seemed to be a good location until winter comes and your old lead acid batteries are not good anymore and don't hold the charge anymore. So we will figure this out probably uh, next fall or next winter then, uh, May, June 2026. And then we have to find a location for these panels where we get these three hours of sunshine at least, so we can charge enough into the batteries, which then gets us over the 24 hour period. All right, my friends, this concludes the quick video about the capacity test of the new lithium iron phosphate solar gate battery. Man, Thank you so much for 112,600. It's exactly 600. I can show you here on the dashboard. Look at this, amazing. Welcome to everyone new and welcome back to everyone else. Thank you very, very much for all your generous support. Buying me a beer keeps me definitely alive here even through winter. And thanks a lot for all your nice and beautiful comments. This is all much appreciated. Guys, until the next video, when we unpack this mysterious do-it-yourself prototype box. Until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. 4.65 ampere hours. Jeez. It is such a tiny capacity. It's a tiny project.